disk capacities in various forms. I have worked as a model disk validator at uh, Deloitte. Thereafter, I worked at Bank of America in risk optimization initiatives. Thereafter, I worked as a senior quant uh, uh, pricing uh, in uh, pricing derivatives quant at Wells Fargo. And currently, I work at uh, risk management, so quant risk researcher at CMA Group. Uh, this was uh, a short introduction about me. Uh, so let's begin the session, right? So uh, let me share my screen. Uh, let me know once you can see the screen. Yeah, I hope you can see my screen. Uh, maybe somebody could come. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I think today, right, I think uh, while I wanted to start it from a different point, right, but today I think Vijay shared uh, this uh, paper, right, and uh, it was about you know, Brownian motion and its application in stock market, right, and he started with, uh, you know, the paper roughly starts from here, there's a sigma algebra filtration on omega is a family of subsets of omega such that so on and so forth, right. And then there's a definition of probability space. It's a triple, which is omega filtration and probability measure and so on and so on. So uh, generally, whenever you would read any quant research papers, right? Uh, what I would say is the material is classified into many types. So some of them are really simple uh, to begin with, easy to understand, palatable, right? But some of the papers are, you know, they start with assuming that you know a lot of things at the back end and uh, it's it starts getting difficult right if if i were uh, an engineering student right who has no background in stats or quant finance this looks daunting to me right to begin with and the moment i have an issue understanding with what is written here right everything else below starts yeah, it it's it's greek and latin for me right and uh, i struggle to understand right that so uh, the way we are going to structure this course is as it is named, right? It's a quant finance 101 course, right? So all the essentials which are required to get onto any uh, rigorous uh, quant finance course, right? So those fundamentals will be clear covered here so that uh, we have a, a good background to begin with, right? Uh, our idea is to, you know, understand what is happening, right? Uh, it, it's very critical to understand in, in, in case you miss something, uh, everything builds up on that previous step. So if you miss the previous step, so uh, you are likely to face some issue uh, in the next steps. So uh, let's begin our session, right? So the way I have planned to structure this first session is to start with probability space, uh, uh, which is what is omega filtration and probability measure. And then we'll go to radon nicodium derivative and then numerical example, okay, and some problem for practice. I don't think we'll be able to cover uh, uh, all things in this session. We'll carry it forward to the next session if you're not able to cover. But uh, let's see how it goes from here, right? And uh, uh, I would uh, like if this session is interactive, so it will keep telling me, you know, at, at, at what place we are and where uh, do we want to reach, okay? So let us start with the first topic, right? Which is probability space. So just give me a second. Let me hide this. Yeah. So let us start with the discussion of probability space. So probability space essentially has three elements. Right? So it has three elements of omega filtration and probability measure. So omega filtration and a probability measure, right? So can someone on this call, I think Omega should be easy to uh, comprehend, right? Can someone on this call tell me what is Omega? Uh, so I, it will also give me a gauge, right? Whether or not you uh, know these basics. If not, I'll cover it, okay? So take a shot. It's okay uh, you, we missed something. Is it sample space? Yes, so uh, it's a sample space. So uh, uh, let us be more, uh, what can I say? Uh, naive about it okay let us be non let us be non-technical about it okay so ca can someone go one step ahead and what 
explain what is explain what is sample space not define but explain what is a sample space i mean you have to explain it to someone who is not from maths background okay you have to explain sample space to a guy who does not understand anything from maths set of all possible so yeah go ahead so uh, it's like if any uh, experiment is done so the right. set of all possible outcomes of the experiment exactly like what can we obtain from the experiment right so uh, so important thing for this is right we perform an experiment right and after i mean before we perform an experiment we are we know all the outcomes that can occur as an outcome of that experiment right so omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 right and a collection of all these things right we know up front before even we perform the experiment and collection of this set is called as omega right and let us be more specific about it right so the example right so if we were to toss a coin right so uh, the possible outcomes which are possible are only heads and tails right so in context of uh, a coin toss this is the omega and so on and so forth right so if you have uh, a die roll so you have 1 2 3 and so on up to 6 so this is your omega so uh, i hope everybody is comfortable with this concept so that we can move to the next concept of filtration okay so consider uh, coin tosses right instead of one coin toss let us consider a set of coin tosses okay so uh we start at time t is equal to 0 right so here we have with probability 1 by 2 right uh we have we can get the heads okay where with a fair coin toss and or we can get a tail right uh next with we toss it again right we could get heads or we could get tails from here with with same probability 1 by 2 and we continue evolving this right uh coin toss we could get another heads we could get tails we could get heads we could get tails from this head tail and here we could get a head or a tail and let us say that everything is with probability 1 by 2 with no dependence on previous tosses right so uh, our sample space becomes this so omega okay is equal to h h h h h t right then we can have h t h or h t t right then we can have t h h then t h t then we can have you know t t h and t t t okay i hope everybody is comfortable with this as the sample space now let us uh, look at what is filtration right so like i said you know we are looking we are going to look at the things from not mathematical perspective i mean mathematical but we are more into understanding the things okay if if i were to say what is f right then this is how it is mathematically defined f is a sigma algebra on omega family of subsets of f such that it is phi or omega they are part of f and so on unions and complements and all of that okay now for a coin toss let us see what is f okay i'm not even specifically mathematically defining it i'm just going step by step okay so uh let us say you're suppose you so you can think of filtration okay as information content okay now let us say you are at time t is equal to 0 right so what is the information which you have at time t is equal to 0 right either you can toss that coin okay which means you can get all omega 
all the outcomes or you don't toss the coin and nothing happens. Okay, I hope uh, this is okay with everyone, right? Now starts the interesting part. Let us say what is F1? Okay, always remember that as you keep progressing in time, the thing which has happened in past, you're not going to lose it, right? That information is going to stay with you, right? So we are still going to start with at F1, you know that at F0, the information was omega or phi with you, right? But what can happen is at F is equal to one, right? You are either going to be on, you're either going to be on this branch, right? Or you're going to be on this branch, right? You know that for sure. So you, your this information set, right? Your omega gets partitioned, okay? Depending on where, where it is going to be, right? If it is on edge, okay? So your first toss was a head, okay? So you're going to keep everything with first as head, right? So what happens is you have H, 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 then you have H, H, T, then you have H, T, H, and then you have H, T, T as one set, right? Or you can have the second set of uh, T, H, H, right? T, H, T, 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 H, or T, T. Right, and I close this. I hope uh, everyone is comfortable with this. If if there is any question, right, people can go ahead and ask. Okay, so uh, simply I'll name this set as A H. Okay, and I'll name this set as A T. Okay, so A H, right. I can call it as H H H H H T H T H and H T T and A T as a set that starts with T, right? So T H H T H T T T H and T T T. Right. So if I have to rewrite F1, okay, so my F1 will be equal to omega phi, okay, then I have a h, then I have a t, okay. Now, can someone tell me what is union of a h and a t? Omega. Yeah, so AH and AT itself gives you omega and intersection of AH and AT is phi, okay? So by definition, F contains, okay, whatever partitioned elements plus all of their unions and all of their complements. So in, in that sense, uh, this is what filtration means. So this is what we have uh, in sense of filtration, right? Now let us go, uh, can someone tell me what will be F2, okay? Just give me a second, I'll just scroll down a little. So in, in the same vein, right? Let us try to figure out what is F2, okay? So it has to again contain all the information which was contained earlier, right? So it will have omegas, phi's, ahs, and ats, right? Apart from that, what will it have? So what is happening is we are at the second coin toss, right? So at the second coin toss, this has been decided that whether we are on this branch, I mean, we are on this toss, this toss, this toss, or this toss. And depending on where we are, we are going to proceed with only with the corresponding branches. We cannot, being here, we cannot get this outcome, correct? So this event has already realized, this has event already has been realized. So being here, we cannot go here or here, right? That is why it gets partitioned, right? So if I get back, right? So what do we end up with? We end up with 
Okay, so first H is fixed, second H is also fixed. Then we have T or first H is fixed, second H is, so uh, second H is fixed and then we have H, right? So this is the first element, okay? And so on and so forth, up to the last elements, right? Where we have T, T, T and uh, T, T, H. So I will call these four set of elements, right? I will call this as A, H, H. Then we have something called as A, T, H. Then we have called A, H, T. And then we have something called as A, T, T, right? So if you were to rewrite F2, F2 is equal to omega pi, right? A H A T. Then we have A H H. Okay. A T H A H T and A T T. Is there any other element which you are missing? Is there anything else that we're missing? No, Hello? sir. No, uh, we are missing actually, right? Because like I said, filtration is supposed to have all the unions and intersections as well, right? So what you can have is you can have a H H. Okay. Union with a H. Correct. What now? So can someone tell me what will this contain? This set. A H H union with A H. Right. All A H. A H. Okay. This will contain A H. Okay. And what will A H H union A T contain? Five, nothing. Yes, so it will contain all of these elements, right? Plus uh, these two elements, correct? So these two were part of A H, right? These two elements were earlier part of A H, right? And A T contains these four elements: one, two, three, four. So AHH union AT contains six elements, correct? So all combinations of these four and six elements and their intersections, right? So all the unions and intersections. So this is what is F, F2, okay? And so on and so forth, okay? So it will keep evolving with time. As you can see, F0, okay, is a subset of F1, is a subset of F2, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I hope uh, now let us go back to definition and see what we don't know, right? So phi and omega is supposed to be subset of F, okay? For if A is part of F, then so does A complement, right? I think that comes by definition, right? So if you're going to take unions and intersections of everything, right? So what essentially what we are saying is if a H is an element, then a H complement also has to be an element, right? Sometimes it is obvious. I mean, it will be part of unions and intersections. If that is not the part, then that will have to be separately included, right? Then if a1, a2, so on is a sequence of sets in F, then their unions and intersections of the count countably many members of the algebra, right? So this is exactly what we had, right? So we have all the unions, intersections, their complements, and all those elements, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So uh, is there any question? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there any question? If not, we'll continue uh, with this. Oh, yeah. Sir?
Just give me a minute, okay? Just give me a minute. Yep. Sorry for the interruption. So, uh, was there a question? Hello. Hello. Was there a question? Hello. Is am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. You may continue, okay. sir. Okay, let's continue. So uh, we have seen something called as filtration, right? So now let us go to what is a probability measure. So probability measure. Right. So probability measure is a function, right? Which maps filtration to 0,1, right? Uh, again, like I said, uh, we'll, we'll, given that we have this technical aspect of it, we'll look at it in, in slightly different way in terms of examples and all, right? So what probability measure does is it assigns probabilities to all the filtrations. Uh, so subset of elements of, of filtration, right? So uh, consider a coin toss, right? Which has omega, of heads and tails, right? And so on and so forth, right? So if if we have F, so F has elements of, F naught has element of omega and filtration, right? So the probability of omega is equal to one, probability of phi is equal to zero, right? And then, we have probabilities associated, right? For example, probability of AH, right? Can someone tell me what is the probability of AH? In, in, in three coin tosses, okay, let me define it. We have three coin tosses, right? And I have defined the set of what AH means, right? This is what AH means. So what so is one by two? Yes. So probability associated with AH will be one by two with AH H will be one by four and so on and so forth. Right. So P is defined as a probability measure. Right. So P is a probability measure which assigns probability to every element of F. OK, so that essentially is a probability measure. Uh, is, is, is there any question so far? If not, we are now going to jump. So these were just elementary basics, right? So we are going to jump into something more interesting. But before that, are there any questions? If not, then I'll jump into a question. Okay, I presume that there is no question. Okay, now let us jump into something interesting. Okay, 
now let us say i have so let us say we start at t is equal to 0 okay and at t is equal to 0 the stock price is okay price is equal to 100 okay and all you have to tell is you know so someone buys the stock at t at p is equal to 100 right of course everyone buys something some financial asset to make a gain out of it right so that guy gains if the stock ends above 100 right and uh, loses if he if it ends below 100 right so he just worried whether or not it will go above 100 or it will end up below 100 okay so can someone tell me you know what is the probability associated with it okay now you the one i yeah one by two yes you should use all these concepts right which i have just mentioned right so omega right so for our experiment what is omega omega is surprise going up or down right so omega is you know stock price, price going up or down right price at t1 is greater than 100 right and price at t1 is less than 100 right so this is our omega now with this omega the probability which you have associated okay is 1 by 2 slash 1 by 2 okay now let us come back to another example let us say i have a tennis match with roger federer okay can someone tell me what is the omega so there is a match right zero one yeah so ajit and roger federer right have a match not sure of the spelling so our omega is let us keep it from one person's perspective right so either ajit wins or ajit loses okay can someone tell me what is the probability associated with i mean there is a reason why i have chosen the names right otherwise i could have simply said a and e theoretically one to one but it's not one to sorry you are not audible uh, it can be win lose or tie okay so those are outcomes right those are outcomes win those lose or disputing or tie right i am asking the prob probabilities given these outcomes zero. The uh, it can one. be anything between 0 and 1 yes but what will it be 0 and 1 by 3 Uh, okay so there are two answers right so there is 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 by 3 and someone said 0 1 and 0 correct so this is this is this brings us to a very interesting standpoint okay and this itself is the reason why quantitative finance goes in analytical direction and this is where you know data science separates from quantity finance okay and quant uh, and machine learning data science and all goes into a different direction okay and and quant finance goes into a different direction okay so you are saying you know someone said that probability is 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 by 3 okay like i had earlier hinted there is a meaning attached to the fact that i said that the match is between me and roger federer right i could have said that the match is between a and b right if i say that the match is between a and b you don't know anything right in that sense this makes sense correct but if it is between me and him right you know with almost sure probability that i am going to lose he is going to win and tie is almost impossible right so this brings us to a new probability measure being associated with the same event correct now but we can not be sure sure for second condition also no no i am not saying we are sure or not okay all i am saying is when i give you the extra information of that the fact that the match is between me and roger federer that changes your probabilities altogether correct yes sir that's all i'm saying okay i'm not claiming that this is right okay 
who knows right i have never played tennis but maybe this could be 100 right you never know but that is not the point i'm trying to make point i'm trying to make is if you have a probability experiment right objectively it gets associated with a certain set of probabilities okay and this is a frequentist approach right if i and roger i mean if a and b okay play match infinite num- i mean whatever right very large number of matches and given that if you don't have any extra information right so you assume that we are both equally skilled right so we have infinite number of matches so this is what will happen this is what uh statistically we come to know in case we don't have any extra information but given that we have information right it changes everything right so same set of events can have multiple probability measures being associated to it right i hope this is clear but to be called something else as a probability majority just supposed to satisfy two things right uh first so i mean any probability measure should satisfy same things right so the sum of all the probabilities over all your unique events right not n omega right so not even this right so i to omega right so this has to be equal to 1 right or uh you know and you know all uh, and all p omega i's have to be greater than or equal to 0 and all p omega i's have to be less than or equal to 1 right as long as these conditions are satisfied you can have uh, a different probability measure right so you can have a different probability measure called q omega i's right defined on the same experiment right which satisfied same conditions so it is a valid probability okay. measure so it is a valid probability measure okay any questions so far ah uh, someone is at my door okay just give me a minute uh you can mute me ayush just give me a minute i'll be back okay so let's get back right so we can associate a different probability measure with the same stochastic process right so you can have same evolution over period of time of any experiment which you have but you can still associate with a different probability measure q so you have p you have q so the question is uh this is okay in terms of a real life example right where we know a certain set of probabilities associated and all right but two questions one why would you want to have a different probability measure right why different probability measure and second question is is there any relation between these two probability measures right so like i said right this is exactly where uh quant finance goes into a different direction from data science so i'll i'll define two new things okay so two kinds of probability measures and we'll we'll see in detail about that but okay if you have a, a natural process okay and it it evolves naturally with 
um, you know objective probabilities right then we say that the stochastic process is evolving under a natural probability measure okay so natural probability measure okay and uh, i'll say a new probability measure for now okay i don't know some of you must have heard this that this is in quant finance is called as risk neutral probability measure okay so what is natural natural probability measure okay so for example right uh, uh let us take a live example where probability is used in its natural probability measure right and it's used in the world of uh, in, in the world of finance right can can someone tell me right if if, if there is a guy okay so a person a has a term insurance right such that upon his uh, so he has it uh, his current age is you know maybe 30 years okay he get uh, i mean if he dies right by the age of 60 years right a payout of 1 crore happens okay now there is a the, this guy is supposed to pay some premium correct so how is this premium calculated can someone take a guess sir is it related to compound interest somehow no it's not related to that sir can you please uh, answer repeat the question again sir is bit of yes yes i think repeating question is important right because everybody needs to understand the question yes. first the question is simple i am at the age of 30 years okay i bought an insurance policy which pays me out 1 crore rupees okay if i die by age of 60 years right and for that insurance policy right uh, i mean someone won't give me this for free right i'll have to pay a premium for it right so how is this premium computed So even so before we take a, and, uh, sorry, so even, this uh, can be calculated by the salary or the income the one individual get per year, uh, and how much he pay see, for the premium? See, this number of one crore gets decided by the salary of that individual. Okay, that is yes. not what we are talking about. What we are talking about is after this amount has been decided. how does premium get decided sir 1 crore divided by 30 divided by 30 into 12 okay so but is is 1 crore payout sure i mean it depends guys right so if sir only only we give you 1 crore then maybe it even makes sense to divide 1 crore by you know 30 years of his life right and then divide that by 12 months so that you get the monthly premium okay but that is not how the event is defined right the event is defined in case of death only one crore is paid so what can happen is you can live from 30 to 60 and you don't die and your premiums are all gone yeah so in it also how likely that he will die at or how we, how likely is he will not die correct that is exactly how it is done okay but let us go one step further right now it so you are saying that it depends on probability of death correct in 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 insurance term that is called as mortality rate okay that we at taken project uh, using uh, the person's behavior habits current habits yes 
but sir, they can hope. project it by the help and of uh, that ratio of in, uh, that type of that area. And also, and also, sir, we can uh, like uh, uh, keep in mind the diseases or uh, comorbid the person has. Yes. Have has has any one of you ever taken in life insurance? I don't think so. Yes, right? sir. Okay, you have taken right. Are are these all questions asked to you? I mean, questions are asked. Sir. But no, no it. questions are asked. My parents exactly. are for me. Exactly. So if you have only when you have some substantial amount, right? Let us say over two crores and all. Any health checkup and all is done. Sir, okay. sir, I have one question. Yes. Why? Sir, does it depend? Uh, sir, does it depend on how frequently is he pay paying the premium? I mean, he can interrupt and then again pay like discontinuous in a discontinuous manner. No, yes, but the premium amount is decided before he starts paying, right? Not after he starts paying. Correct. Right? Today I am entering into a contract with a life insurance firm. As of day zero, the firm tells me what's the premium. So it does not depend on my credibility whether or not I default on premium payments, okay, or I do pay the premium payments. I think the earlier line of direction was right, okay, that it is dependent on the probability of that, or in other words, called as mortality rate, okay. But two things, right? First question: How do we get probability of death? Of a guy. Okay, one way someone said that you know check his all his habits. Okay, check his family history if he had of any disease. Check his habits, smoking, drinking or not, right? And all these things, right? That is one way to get this probability, right? Firms, I mean insurance firms. I mean you should understand, right? Insurance business is maybe 150, 200 years old. 200 years back, did you even have these all machine learning models and all of these things, right? They are not, they were not available, right? I mean, collection of data at such a intensive scale was not available earlier, right? So what is a clever trick what that, that insurers use? Uh, sir, we can take the average lifespan of the, of the people at particular region or state or country. Like if it is uh, more than 60, we can uh, keep the threshold of 60 or it is more than 70, we can keep the threshold of 70 like that way. Yeah, so uh, you're you're roughly there, but it is not broken up by region wise. OK, so let us look at it. OK, I'll directly show you a mortality table and you will understand. But that does not fully answer our question. We'll come back to the question. Mortality table. So this is how a sample mortality table looks like. Okay. Can everyone see this? Let us go to that table. Yeah. Can everyone see this table? I hope everyone can see this table, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, it is visible. So this is a sample table, right? So what they have done is, they have calculated the probability of death at each age. Okay. So they say that, you know, your probability of death at the age of 30 is 0 0.0089 at 31 is equal to 0 0.0091 okay and it keeps increasing okay now can you tell me how can you use this information
सर फॉर द पर्सन एट द हु वांट्स टू गेट प्रीमियम व्हेन ही डाइज एट 30 विल कैप कीप लेस अमाउंट फॉर हिम टू गिव एंड फॉर द पर्सन हु वांट इट एट 60 ही विल पे मोर अमाउंट्स यस यस ही विल पे बट हाउ विल यू डिसाइड द अमाउंट you your your logic is right okay if you start at the age of 30 okay this is premium right if you start at the age of 30 okay and you say that your insurance is only for one year okay then he will pay lower premium but guy who starts at 30 and wants the cover up to 60 years that guy will pay higher premium right there is the probability higher probability that payout will have to be made okay so let me so, let me steer, steer this uh, conversation from here okay so you bought this insurance at the age of 30 correct now there are two things that can happen right at the age of 31 right you could have died okay let us say the probability of that is this right or you could have not died right then the probability is this correct now this is the probability and what what happens at at 31 right if this happens then the firm that is insurance firm loses 1 crore correct if this happens then insurance firm gains a premium of whatever premium amount correct and this continues they continue doing this and then they take expectation of this payoffs right now what should i set this expected payoff to hello what is the expected value of this payoff One crore, right? Sorry, no, no. One crore. One crore. That that payment is already happening here, right? And premium is happening here. So expected payoff has to be zero. Correct. So the point I'm trying to say is, okay, let us try to understand the reason for this equation in a different way. Okay. let us say okay the insurance company does not understand so much of probability statistics and everything okay they have a premium amount to set correct now let by solving this equation okay so you will have p into respective probabilities okay p is your premium and uh, minus 1 into probability of death and all right so this is set to zero that is your, that is why you have only one variable you solve this equation and you get the premium amount okay so let us say that this is p star okay or this is equal to correct premium right now what happens if an insurance company who does not understand all these mechanics right and set some arbitrary amount of premium okay then there are only two possibilities that premium which is set by insurance company either it is greater than p star okay or it is less than p star correct what happens if premium is greater than p star the company will be in loss why loss okay so company was supposed to keep p star of 2500 rupees company kept 3000 rupees okay so company okay, will uh, lose yeah. yeah. oh, sorry the company will gain if it is um, less than p star then it will be in Uh, yeah so but what do we mean by loss by loss what we mean is on an average okay the number of claims will be greater than 3000 this is average correct expectation is average so if premium is set to less than p star okay then the expected payouts will be higher than 3000 correct and you don't want that so what will happen is you will default okay so by collecting so instead so you are supposed to collect 2500 you collected premium of 2000 by collecting selling this to you know maybe 1 crore people right 
you you got 2000 crore rupees right but the number of people died are higher right so you are paying 1 crore right per person right so you just need 2000 if 2000 people die right out of the 1000 1 crore people to which you have sold the insurance pre policy right if 2000 of those die right then what happens is then your payout is higher than 2000 crore correct which you have collected it means you don't have the money to pay out for all of them correct on the contrary if you collect more amount okay you have surplus okay but what will happen is your competitor will come in okay and he will start charging 2900 okay so all of your people will start switching from you to him this will keep happening until what point until what point it is feasible to keep going down okay it is feasible only up to 2500 but the point i was trying to make was all of these calculations okay the very central thing on which these calculations are based okay what is that central thing The central thing is mortality table, correct? And where do you get these probabilities from? So these are the probabilities which have been actually calculated. Okay. So at this age, this country has these many people. How many deaths were recorded at that age? Correct. So this is a frequentist approach. So this is under natural probability measure. Okay. I hope everyone gets this. This is very critical and this will help us yes. uh, build things on. This is based on a natural probability measure. So to do any kind of these computations, okay, and these computations, okay, you require this, which is this in our case of, of insurance. Without this, you, you won't be able to do any calculations. Now, in the call, some people were suggesting to use, you know, use his health habits, use his family history and all of that, right? When you incorporate that, what happens is you improve the estimate of probability of death. And the better is your estimate, okay? Then the more accurate is your this P star number. The more accurate, then you can decide whether or not currently you're charging higher or lower, and then you can tweak your premiums accordingly. That is the value add of machine learning which comes in, right? So the current factor which was considered in mortality table is only one single factor, that is age. What is the current age? If you keep adding factors, right, then you can keep improving your probability of computation. I mean, your, you can reduce your errors in calculation of the probability. And the lesser errors you have, the more accurate estimate you have, then better is your calculation, right? And so you can come up with a correct number. Okay. Now, similarly, if you have to do anything, okay, under natural probability measure in the derivatives market, in the financial world, right? We'll, we'll, we'll go into deeper and all of the other things. Okay. But let us take a very simple example, right? Let us say you have a stock price, right? And if you want to take expectation of that, right? So how do you take it? What do you need to do for that? Uh, Expectation is simply, you know, integral. Uh, I mean, I'll desist from using integral, right? So let us take discrete cases. So it is SIs and P of SIs, correct? So you know, you want to know where the stock prices will go, right? And the probabilities associated with that. How can you know that? You can look at history, okay? And that will tell you how naturally, I mean, naturally what has been the probability of stock going to some place or the other place, okay? Uh, but you know, which is, which is where we come to this point, right? When I had asked you a question, right? That stock is at hundred. Okay. 
uh, what is the probability that it will go above hundred or less than hundred? Okay, someone answered it is one by two and one by two. Okay, now can someone correct this? Sir, it will be dependent on the previous past of that stock. Exactly. What will be the probability of it? So, so, okay. What you have said or suggested, right, is essentially Q, Q measure of probability or risk neutral measure of probability. Under risk neutral measure, stock price will be one by two, one by two. Okay. Now. I say both contrary statements that it is not one by two, one by two, and it also is one by two, one by two, right? And let us try to think through when it is this and when it is that. Okay, so in in natural probability measure, it is actually p and one minus p, correct? So this is the probability of stock going up and down. Okay, now, like I said, like like I gave an example here, right? If I already told you the match is between Ajit and Roger Federer, right? Your probability is completely change, correct? So your probability calculation depends on what? It depends on information, correct? So if you have this information that it is between Ajit and a very good player, then your probability is change. If you don't have any information, if I tell you it is between player A and B, right? Then your probabilities associated are one by two and one by two, correct? In the same sense, if I say that all the information which affects the stock price has currently already been captured in the stock price itself, okay? Then this statement holds true that going forward, the probability of the stock going up and down is equally likely. There is no reason why it should give preference over going up or going down. If that information has not been incorporated, then it evolves as per, or you have some extra set of information, right? That, you know, every Monday the stock only goes up or every third Wednesday, every third Wednesday of a year it goes up, okay? Something as granular as that. You have that extra piece of information, then you have an extra piece of, I mean, change probability measure at, attached to it. Okay, the point I'm trying to make is you need historical data to get a risk, a, a, a natural probability measure, which is what happens in insurance and lots of other things. And wherever this historical data is required, useful, or has a value add, all of those fields require machine learning or data science, or it is helpful. Everything what happens in the quant finance derivative space, okay happens under a risk neutral probability measure called as Q, right? So it does not happen in P, it happens in Q. That is why it does not require any historical data analysis or machine learning equivalent model building or probability estimations because it is this, okay? So I think we are towards the end of our first session. What I'll do is I'll export this and I'll send it out. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was not really structured about writing it out, but I think the idea was, I think it's also being recorded so people can refer it back. So the idea was, you know, to pen down thoughts, okay. And to, you know, think through, okay. To build, uh, to build a basic infrastructure so that we can build onto this. Okay. Is, is there any questions? So, Sorry? Uh, sir, I have a question. Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, sir, like uh, I understand this, uh, the our new sample set that is Q, uh, which is included in the risk. But uh, like I, I have this fundamental question, like don't you think it becomes a you know lifelong quest to find the perfect P or perfect Q? It may never happen because there can be multiple factors coming by time. Exactly. exactly. Now, yeah. now you appreciate the fact. Okay, now you appreciate the fact that there were a couple of guys, right? I think you will hear this again and again. You must have even heard it earlier. There were guys called as Black, Scholes, and Merton, right? These guys invented a certain formula and 
also this framework okay of risk neutral measure before this okay before 1970s the whole world was beyond finding what is or how to calculate p probability measure for a stock and because they were struggling to and because they couldn't we could not have a good formula for option pricing and all. we'll will come to that okay but now i have all i have done is presented a problem to you i have not yet presented a solution and which you have very correctly picked it up that the number of models you will have to build to simply find out p is astounding okay and just imagine this is only for one stock okay any exchange has 5000 to you know whatever 10000 stocks or whatever for every stock you will have to find what is p simply finding p in itself will become a big project isn't it but yes <coughs> let it be one stock 100 stock or 1000 stocks or 100000 stocks you do for every stock if you assume probability is 1 by 2 1 by 2 you can still price it correctly that's all they have said and they have made it with a very rigorous valid mathematical point which gives birth to the field of point finance okay it's not some assumption it's not an assumption of 1 by 2 1 by 2 they have very rigorously showed that if you price it under this probability measure your answer is going to be right and for that matter what they have also proved is even if you find real probability measure right it is going to be redundant as far as pricing this derivative is concerned you don't require this you require this probability measure that that probability measure will be helpful in making money okay so that might tell you whether stock is going to go up then you can invest and make money derivative is not about making money it's about good perfect hedging sir can i ask you a question sure go ahead sir uh, like uh, insurance company uh, is quantitative finance used in insurance companies and uh, also in actuaries yes it is they Lot also it is use used neutral. they use they also use risk neutral but in a different context okay but if you see their main business model okay that is dependent on natural probability measure right because you need to know the mortality rates and mortality rate you can do only by statistical estimation so that goes into the realm of the natural probability measure and not really risk neutral it does not mean that they don't use risk neutral they use it but in a different context so if i learn quantitative finance uh, is it useful to get into consulting also management consulting directly management consulting no okay uh, what happens is uh, these consultancies have some vertical okay i was in deloitte they have a vertical called as risk advisory okay mm-hmm. risk advisory works on consulting firms about their risk models and risk models have derivatives some i mean a lot of these risk models have derivatives as underlying okay and for the derivative pricing you require this but the kind of management consulting which you are saying right generally it's not used there for example bcg bain right? right which is about strategic consulting okay which market should you go how should you enter in and all there it is not used but maybe if they have if they have a vertical like risk advisory like you mentioned yes, yes. they might have a quantity which, of which finance is, which is a specialized vertical and which consults firms only specifically on quant finance derivatives and all of that that's where it is used right right but usually the opportunities are all across right the banking insurance and hedge funds and all that yes so anybody and everybody who uses derivatives will require this not only okay. that okay you can go to bp right i don't know uh, this is british petroleum they also require it you go to shell right mm-hmm. they also require you go to big agriculture firms you go to tata steel they require it you go to tata motors they require it will come to the motivation behind why do they require it okay sure sure right every anything and everything which has an international presence requires it they have a prop desk and all which separately handles this but again we are just only in our introductory class and we have a lot to cover <coughs> okay so any other question 
and also like apart from uh, this course like uh, uh, you will also suggest us uh, some online courses to complete yes, i mean yes. after I this what what we can do is uh, do keep this question uh, parked in your mind okay uh, towards the end of our workshop okay by the fourth week i'll suggest books i'll suggest courses and i'll suggest materials to read watch and understand sure sir thank you very much so as you must have seen right this introduction brings us only to the first two paragraphs okay that's all we have covered i mean so just to give you an idea quant finance is a marathon okay you need to do it slowly so that you do it correctly okay there's no point in sprinting running through all concepts and going to the last concept on the first day okay it will confuse you and it will uh, you know dent your confidence and you'll feel that there's so much to learn and all you know things are extremely simple right just now i explained right filtration and all right if you look at its mathematical definition it is extremely precise mathematically but not everybody relates to it as with an example right so if you provide an example it is most likely that people will relate to it my way of you know conveying the message will always going to be example based so that it it makes sense and after you have understood this you will always relate to the filtration as information content and all and on top of this you read anything related to filtration you will understand it better that's my hope okay any other questions Uh, I have a question. Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, so like, uh, I don't know how to put it, but still I will try. Like, uh, for you now we are uh, finding the P, so we are building machine learning models to find the perfect. But what is the impact of biases uh, on this? What can be the potential impact? Because uh, if we consider empirical data or uh, any data. Uh, The subset, then there can be biases uh, in you know getting that data or presenting it. Can potentially like my question is uh, uh, what is the impact of biases on all of this? Impact of biases, you mean? I think your yes, your sir. voice was not clear. You know what we can do is maybe you can frame your question and write it in the group, right? So in our next session we can uh, take that question. So your voice was not clear. Okay. If you could write it down, we will sure. definitely pick up in the next session. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Do do go ahead and ask questions. Okay. The more you ask, the more you are likely to learn. I don't know. i mean just for the fun part right i don't know how many of you watch this the sheldon series right in 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 sheldon right he 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 introduces this concept right of different so he says his statement is very good right he says possibilities okay is not equal to probabilities right so possibilities gives rise to this and probabilities you know gives rise to this so that's just on a separate fun note but if nothing else right from anyone maybe we can continue this uh, from uh, next session so uh, just to give a heads up to everyone right uh, only this since this was an introductory session we would uh, we are you know uh, going through this format but uh, every session which will have going forward uh, except when is this session we are going to have uh, a few assignments okay and most of the questions are going to be about writing some python script and you know some doing some stuff okay so uh maths part by and large will cover in our sessions maths and finance part uh coding part uh will be assignments i will also help out as and when if there are any issues while writing the code right you can uh, i mean we can discuss them over our session clearing i mean doubt clearing call which would have on wednesdays and we can go in depth in case you have some issues with writing the codes but just sir, is python 
prerequisite for this course? Sorry. Is Python the prerequisite for this course? Uh, in 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 a sense, because you will need to start with some common language, right? Uh, I don't want right. you to start spending too much effort learning a language itself. I thought Python uh, has much less syntax issues and all, so it's easier to grasp for a new learner. So. Uh, Uh, so the only thing which you have, right? The only thing which you have a profile just to stay connected. Yes, yes, I'll share my LinkedIn profile. And and just to give the scope of coding, right? So in coding, you'll require only loops. Okay. Loops and conditions. If you know this much of coding, this should be sufficient. We are not really going into classes and you know polymorphism and all of that. So we are just going mm -hmm. to focus on simple things. Uh, and our idea is to think and generate algorithms, right? Not really use any custom Python libraries. A little bit of pandas here and there just to pull data from somewhere, but uh, mostly loops and conditions, if, else, and for loops and while loops. Sure. So do you think like if we complete this course successfully, uh, we, we can uh, explore some job opportunities? In in my opinion, no, right? Because I'll, I'll give you the reason. Because uh, this course will give you the base to, to learn things, okay? Beyond this, also there are going to be a lot of things to learn, okay? So four weeks, as you can understand, right? You can't cook a biryani in a Maggie's time, right? Maggie's happens in two minutes, biryani takes an hour. So it takes an hour, it takes an hour, okay? Uh, so I'll not give any false promises or hopes, but four weeks is very short, okay? It's a good foundation at least. Yeah, foundation is good. I can assure you that any concept which I have, or which you'll be covering, you would not have any doubts in any of those concepts, okay? So once your foundation is clear, right? You and I'll also teach you how to learn, how to read a white paper, how to progress in that direction, right? So you can uh, progress a lot. Plus I'll give you good material, okay? Good set of books, which if you follow, and if you complete exercises of all of those books, then I can definitely assure you that you can get a job in this field. Okay? Sure, sir. Okay, let's continue from here. The, the session, the sections which are pending, right, which are supposed to be covered are, you know, uh, radon nicodium derivative, which is this. Then a numerical, numerical example of the same. So uh, radon nicodium derivative is the base for Grisnov's theorem. Okay. And so on and so forth. Okay. So like we did now, if you, if you read any article on radon nicodium derivative, if you Google it up, and most often, more often than not, you will see a very technically heavy article, right? Mm -hmm. but we are going to simplify it, break it down so that we understand it. I, I expect that. If, if you don't feel bamboozled with this, I would be surprised. Okay, so any other questions? Uh, sir, am I audible now? Yes. Can I ask the question, uh, should I post it on notes? Next no, go on. We have a couple of minutes. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, thank you. So like my question was, uh, for this our uh, new uh, risk, uh, risk uh, neutral probability measure, we need empirical data or any sort of data. We need no, sample, no. sample. No, not or, required. Not we require required. that only for natural probability measure. We don't require for, any uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, can I ask again? For our uh, like, natural my question probability. is uh, for our natural probability measure. Like we are collecting empirical data or any sort of yes. data. We are making ML models. Then what yes. will be the impact of biases? Because there is 99% guarantee that our data contain biases or uh, uh, the, the attributes we use making in that model may contain biases. So yes. don't you think the whole purpose is that to gain profit or to neutralize the risk? 
or if our our whole base contains the biases then it, it in the things may go down uh, the, the things may, may go south for the company yes, the purpose so will be different. very good you asked a very good question okay but the answer to that will not be a short one okay so it will require some explanation okay yes. so uh, we will not be able to cover it in this short span okay so we'll park this question for our saturday's call okay sure. do remember to ask me back again and i'll yes. walk you through uh, uh, you know the uh, relevance of ml bias okay mm -hmm. and so on so how much it affects and whether or not it affects sure, but but let me just make one point clear we are not putting any effort in finding p okay all we are concerned is finding q as far as qf is concerned we are not going to put any effort in the direction of finding p and consequently any errors in finding p and so on and so forth which is biases right yes. so we are not going to put effort but i'll still give you a glimpse of it okay who who puts in effort to find p okay what is the value add of finding p what are the errors which you can commit while finding p and so on and so forth Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so let's close our call for now, right? I'll share these notes. I don't think these are really good notes, uh, but still, I'll I'll share it for the sake of uh, a record, right? is the recording shared sir i'm i'm not sure uh, so uh, the team will be able to help you with that uh, with respect to recording yeah the recording will be shared soon there is no need to worry about the recording okay so let's continue in the next session and we can continue anyways on the chat if if required thank you sir for today's session uh, yes. see you on weekend saturday thank you okay yeah